Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Success Coaching Live. My name is Eric Reed, and I'm your success coach. And we meet here every Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern. So jump on in, say hello, give a thumbs up, let us know you're in the room. Uh-oh, Joe's here. That means great notes, Dr. Holly Kelly. Good message this morning, Dr. Kelly. Y'all need to jump over and check hers out. Good morning, Elvin. Hope you're doing well, and thank you for joining us for Success Coaching. Got some notes for you. And we will get started here in just a minute. Good morning, Carmela. I love that name, Carmela. It's so, uh, hmm, I don't know, mysterious. Um, Carmela. Carmela. See, I'm going to say it all day, but I'm trying to figure out how to roll the R like my Latino friends would say, Carmela. There we go. Carmela. Good morning, Brad. I can roll your R as well, Brad, Brad. It's funny because um, because I travel between North and South America, sometimes I will start to talk. See, you heard it. I said South America. When I'm thinking of a place, my language shifts to whatever that area is. So don't have me start talking about New York or we're all in trouble. Good morning, everybody, but welcome to Success Coaching Live. Good morning, Dr. Gale. Um, we are not going to be able to do music this morning. Not because I didn't prepare, but apparently Facebook feels I'm using too much music and is stopping me from posting the videos that contain music. So if you're looking for yesterday's, I don't know, Facebook sucked it up into the great Facebook place. It's probably the same place socks go, but who knows? We'll live without it. So welcome everybody and welcome to Success Coaching Live. I want to get started with today's lesson and this lesson actually came as a result of a coaching call. And so I was in the middle of a coaching call and a client said, well, my motto is failure isn't an option. I thought, Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to, we need to come back. I, don't worry to me. I'll figure out a solution to the music thing. You know, I got to work around. Good morning, buddy. And they said, failure isn't an option. And they said it like very, very proud, very, very like, um, you know, boldly as if it was tattooed on their back and they had worn it proudly throughout their life. And I, I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tell me what that means. Well, failure isn't an option. I thought, hmm, we need to unpack that because I don't like the sound of that. Because if failure isn't an option, then how are you going to grow? How are you going to learn? How are you going to transform? How are you going to experience new things? And what happens is when cultures and companies and individuals develop this mindset that failure is not an option, then they sit in analytical mode all day long. They sit and look at things like, well, is this the best option? Is there a better option? What if we try it? If we're going to fail and if failure is not an option, then we need to stay here and reevaluate it. And we need to make sure that we've looked at every little detail that we can before we begin because failure is not an option. Well, guess what? That's wrong mind thinking. That is just upside down, backwards, and inside out. Failure has to be an option. Failure has to be one of the first options. Failure has to be the goal. I know, that sounds really contrary to what we think of when it's success coaching. But failure is, you know, I have here on my notes, fail fast, fail often, then celebrate. Because when we're failing, we're taking risks, we're growing into, we're learning and we're experiencing. Now, part of the lesson has to be that we understand that we are not a failure, but the event or the attempt or the idea was a failure. You know, there are companies that I, I work with that we have failure celebration meetings or failure Fridays where we celebrate the failure. Now, granted, there had to be a good intention. There had to be a strategic plan in place when they implemented the idea and it didn't work out because in analyzing the failure, we can begin to see, okay, that option didn't work. What's the feedback? Hmm, interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Or when we went this way, what we discovered is we weren't nimble enough, flexible enough, cost effective enough to succeed in that market. Or that we weren't meeting the expectations of those clients at the higher price point. I hear, I don't know how often during a coaching call, well, it just doesn't work that way. Says who? Everybody else? Have you tested it? Have you gone after it? Have you tried it, failed it, evaluated it, and then celebrated it and gone back into it? We've got to understand that failure is just part of the process. It's not who we are. 
You know, I, I have celebrate stupid outcomes of good intentions. That, you know what? I, I, hey, Facebook yesterday, blame music. Got a bad outcome. Doesn't mean I'm a failure. You have to separate yourself from the event. If you start internalizing, I'm a failure. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're a risk taker. You're a grower. You're a challenger. You're a success seeker. You're a dreamer. You're a doer. And the thing that you stepped into, the option that you tested, the thought that you experimented with didn't work out. The feedback was negative as opposed to positive. The direction that you were intending to go did not have the desired outcome that you sought. That has nothing to do with your internalness. That has to do with the calculated risk. If you look at successful multimillionaires and entrepreneurs that have achieved at a really high level and go all the way back to their beginning, they have failed and failed and failed and failed and failed so many times that they probably can't even count. But they were what they were doing was navigating the waters. They were strategically planning their path. You know, I look at it much like if you've ever gone to like a river or a creek or a creek, depending on which part of town you're from, and you're trying to get across. Now, if failure or slipping was not an option, then you'd be stuck on one side of that river forever because you wouldn't put your foot on the first stone. You wouldn't begin to test the stability of those rocks in the water. And you know what? So what? You put your first foot on the stone. And it's a little wobbly and it's a little shaky, but you're still standing. Then you put the next one and the next one and you're in the middle of the river. And we've all done this. We've all done this as kids. And you're like, oh my gosh, should I turn back or should I keep going? Should I turn back or should I keep going? And we get this point in our lives the same way. Should I turn back or should I take one more step? And here's what's really fun to watch. And I get to see this sometimes with my son. He'll be in that, in that position. And because he doesn't want to turn back, he'll take like one giant leap. He'll, he'll like run, 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 run over the next couple stones. It's almost as if his feet aren't going to even touch the stones because he doesn't want to take the risk of one of them wobbling, but he wants to get to the other side. How did that happen? Because he put his foot on the first stone and said, you know what? I'm just going to have to go with it. I'm going to have to trust it and see what happens. And then the next one and the next one. And now that I've gotten the confidence and the success and I begin to believe in myself, I want to go all out and run across and skip across the top of the stones. Failure has got to be one of your prime objectives every day. I know that sounds crazy, but if you're so afraid of making one false move, if you're so afraid of, of what if somebody sees me mess up? What if somebody calls me out? What if I fail? Then you're going to be stuck on the boring side of the riverbank for the rest of your life. You're never going to get the chance to go and see what's on the other side. And so what if your feet get wet in the process? As my mother said, take off your shoes and socks and dry them. You got a whole day here to play. You've got to be willing to take that failure as not an option out of your vocabulary. You've got to begin to say, I want to fail fast. I want to fail often and I want to celebrate hard. Now, understand that when you fail, it's an event and the desired outcome was not achieved and that now you have new data to perfect and, and, and grow into. I've heard that, you know, the, like the, when a rocket took off and went to the moon that, you know, like a 1% error would have landed them on Jupiter and they had to constant, they were constantly failing back into orbit. They were constantly failing back into the tra trajectory that they were seeking. That it was always out of alignment and they just kept trying to, to maintain the minimal amount of distance from perfection that they could. They were in constant state of failure. They arrived at their target. They celebrated. Looking back, did they report, oh, we have these 10,000 failures? No, they reviewed them and made a decision on how to reduce the number of them and still achieve the goal. That's what you got to do as a success thinker. That's what you got to start doing in your business. And so, no, I don't have a song that sings of that, but I'm sure somebody will find one. And if Matthew's here, I know he's got songs about failure. So as I have in my notes, get rid of failure is not an option mindset and begin to develop the fail fast, fail often, and celebrate mindset. Because only in doing that will you succeed. Now, if you're a manager or a team leader or a boss, here's what you need to do. You need to give your team permission to fail. 
And you need to ask questions and ask questions often and stay engaged, but you have to remove the fear of failure. Okay, Matthew, what's the song? <laughs> Give me the song, Matthew. Matthew's our song man. Um, the idea that you have to be able to turn to somebody on your team and say, wow, what was the desired outcome? Okay, did we, did we, did we achieve it? No. What feedback did we get? Great. Okay, cool. And let it go. Remove the fear of failure and persecution from your office and you will be amazed at the explosive growth that it takes. I'm working with a company that recently moved a person out of alignment or moved a person out of the company that had created such a culture of negativity and finger pointing and failure announcing that everybody became frozen and they weren't able breaking, breaking, breaking Benjamin failure. I'll have to look it up, Matthew. I don't know that song. Um, that everybody in the team had be, just become paralyzed because they just didn't want to be called out in a massive email announcing their failure. They just gave up. They learned helplessness, as we say in psychology. So if you're running a team, create Failure Friday. Create a monthly award where somebody is celebrated for the risk that they took, even if the desired outcome wasn't achieved. Create an opportunity where people can brainstorm and throw as many wild ideas at the bucket that they can come up with. And nobody's is better or worse. They're just options. All right. So that little rant, I guess we could say, came because a coaching client felt that saying failure is not an option was an empowering statement was a strength giving statement, was a vision and mission statement. And truth is, their intention was right, but the language that they were telling themselves, they hadn't really slowed down and broken apart and listened to it with a different perspective. So now guess what? Their, their motto is fail often, fail, or fail fast, fail often and celebrate. And they're growing and they're changing. So part of what I'm working on for our next series, which begins next Monday, is the idea of setting that vision, setting that mission statement, and embracing that so that you can adapt that into your culture and into your goals. Yes, Joe, create an award for the effort taken, acknowledge the risk, encourage, the, encourage to pursue a target, um, celebrate failure. You know, I... So dad, I got a kid that's kind of timid, kind of very self-conscious right now. And he makes one mistake and he calls himself just, and he goes into this. And I've got to be like really focused on celebrating his attempts and not the outcome. I've got to really be intentional with him as my child and, and not noticing, quote, the failure, but noticing the, the risk, noticing the growth, noticing the experience that he is stepping into and his parents, man, we got a heavy job because our kids walk around with the world telling them all kinds of negative stuff and bullying and all the things that go on that we've got to make sure that we're, we're teaching them that failure is not who they are. It's what happened that day or in that event or during that moment, that it doesn't define their worth in the world. But as a matter of fact, it shows that they are risk takers and doers and dreamers and creators and that someday the world will celebrate all their failures. I've heard two stories of failures that turned out to be million dollar successes. One was the sticky note thing. So apparently the whole post-it note thing was just sort of a random thought of some secretary. Whiteout I think was another one. But Silly Buddy. Silly Buddy was a mistake in a lab that somebody kept and they decided it was a fun little toy and then look what happened. So who knows, your failures could turn out to be million dollar ideas when analyzed from a new perspective. All right, so I appreciate you guys joining me here today on Success Coaching Live. I hope you found this of value. If you did, invite other people to join us. Share it out because what we're gonna be doing moving into next week is vision and mission statements, and after that becomes goals, and then after that becomes achievable habits and behaviors to create the results. Um, for those that are following on the book, I have now a deadline for chapter one, and actually have all of the chapters deadlined out. So if you're somebody that's thinking about writing a book, it's not that, well, let me say, once somebody broke it down and got it, <laughs> post-it notes, white out silly buddies for it. Yeah. Um, 
once once I really broke it down into a logical project formula, which is what I do with all my clients, but I turned it back on me, I was like, I can do this. I can be finished, wrapped, and ready to hit publish before January 1st. And so that's the goal. I'll fill you in as we get further, but know that my next big deadline is November 15th. I have to check the chart, but that's chapter review, chapter written and reviewed and ready to move. So I'll keep you up to date on that. If I can help you in any way in your, in your journey as an entrepreneur or you know changing your mindset, reach out, connect with me through social media. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you back here, back here, back, I don't know, back here, love that. Um, I miss our music. Back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Until then, have a great day. Facebook music, you will just have to sing for yourself. No, Joe, not happening. Um, so a good friend of mine who cap happened to catch one the other day, Nathan, wait a minute, stay there, Nathan, don't go anywhere. I'm going to see if I can do this. Everybody stand by. I think we're going to get Nathan here if I do this. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I think. Nathan, you have to accept the invite. Y'all have to, you know, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan's, y'all have to check in. Oh, there's Nathan. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning. How are you? Is this what it looks like at 5 a.m. in your world? This is what it looks like at 5 a.m. This is what it looks like at 1.30 a.m. This is what it looks like at 3.30 a.m. Uh, I was not sleeping. <laughs> so, you know, I got up this morning okay. and uh, started reading my Bible and doing some journaling. And, yeah, had a good time uh, spending having some God time this morning. So, Nathan has a, a clearly a, 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 a daily practice of how he begins his mindset. So quiet time, reading, and quiet time, time to me. <laughs> yeah. Quiet time. I, I saw your post as I was getting back into bed, and I thought, hmm, he's going to be on here pretty soon. I should try and catch that. But, yeah, I didn't catch it. <laughs> so, Nathan, should I jump over to my desk and get our magic cards, or should we do that another day? Maybe we should do you know, that another day. Stars, the hearts, and the moons. Yeah, I might, so, well, we can do it. <laughs> so give us a perspective. I know we're going long, but we've got Nathan in the house. I mean, how can you turn down a moment with Nathan? And he's not even in a bow tie at 5 a.m., which kind of surprises me. But, you know, he probably has pajamas with bow ties. I can I can fix uh, that right now. I've got, I've got one. Okay. Every, uh, no, 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 no. See, Nathan. <laughs> so... So today's was about failure and changing our mindset from failure is not an option, which means we never take a risk, to fail often, or um, fail fast, fail often, and then celebrate. What is a failure that you've recently experienced that taught you to celebrate the experience? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> a recent failure of mine, I would have to say... Um, I think one of the biggest failures that I have is the failure to start. Um, Ooh. You know, it, it's, it's really easy to go, oh my gosh, I did this, or I, you know, and, you know, failure for me is it's interesting because once you have a, like, if you have a success, like a really good success, um, failure becomes uh, really scary because, oh no, what if it sees through my armor? What if someone sees that I'm not perfect? What if they see an imperfection? And, and that has been a huge thing for me lately is, um, is the fear of, of, uh, of, of even starting. It's, it's the failure of starting. Um, you know, I've been, I've been wanting to do a, um, um, a course on how to use uh, Zoom, Zoom conferencing calls. And I've been telling people hear that the last three weeks, three weeks that I was going to be doing this. Or actually, it's probably been longer than that. And, um, you know, this morning I woke up, well, I don't even think I went to sleep, but <laughs> this morning when I was up, I was thinking about that and I was thinking of, of what is it that, that makes me not want to start. And it's the, it's, it's this belief that I'm not enough. And it's this belief that I, that I'm not going to be good enough. And, uh, it's a lie. But it's how do you know that? Yeah. How would you know that unless you start? How do you know that unless you start? That you're not good enough, that you're more than a one-hit wonder? Yeah. 
It, that's exactly it. You don't know. You don't know. So and, do you and, want to know, or are you satisfied with being a one-hit wonder? No, I'm not satisfied with being a one-hit wonder. So but, when will you, know, you start? Well, I'm going to be starting today when I send out my invitation for it. <laughs> so. so you're going to be teaching a course on Zoom. I'm going to be really teaching you're a course. you're starting a lesson that I can begin, and if I fail, I'm more than a one-hit wonder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the biggest thing about failure is failure really isn't a failure unless you fail to learn. And See, I we all have... Thumbs up. Give them a thumbs yeah. up on that one. I'll give myself a thumb up on that. <laughs> you know, and, and, and really, like, you know, what, what are the things that you're failing to start today? Because you're afraid of not looking good, or maybe you're afraid that you might not have all the answers to the questions. Well, no one has all the answers to the questions. So get over yourself. It's, it's going to be fine. And if you don't know the answer to something, or if you get caught off guard with something, then go learn about it. It's not the end of the world. It's part of life. See, see it, was, it was perfect that you didn't sleep tonight. Because you <laughs> now fired this entire room by, to say, you know what, I've been putting this off, and I keep saying next week, next month, next year. And you've told them that by your example of starting your Zoom class, which anybody that wants to learn how to use Zoom, Nathan will come back later and Gail, post the invite. Gail's been private messaging me for a little bit on this. She said, since I am C, I've been saying this. <laughs> yes. So anybody, but what Nathan is really going to be teaching you is that, so what? Go for it. Mm -hmm. Go for it. It's what, not perfect the worst first time. He has enough feedback to make it better. Mm. Yeah, it's true. You know, and I, I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm, I'm brewing my coffee right here. Thinking of you. <laughs> well, I have matha. You know, my matha. I have a bag of it around here. I just haven't used it since uh, Paraguay. <laughs> I have two bag. I have two huge bags of it from Paraguay, and I think I've had it maybe twice. It's an acquired taste for me. Uh, see, so it's it's a ritual here. So, and just as a side note, so here, like this is matha, which is uh, which is hot. In Paraguay, they drink it cold. You'll see people with a thermos, like, you know, the old man metal thermos walking down the street with it under their arm going like this all day long. I realize that I shouldn't be afraid because in Uruguay, you'll drive past a police car and he'll be sitting in the, drinking his motto with the, I'm like, I'm not afraid of a cop who sits and sips on tea all day while he sits at speed traps. Um, it's kind of a different thing. Don't live in a I am. You know, it's a risky world down here. Um, I want to thank you for letting me just jam in and scare you out of your, your, your morning. I, I know now it's going to be hard to go back. Um, would you do me a favor, though, <laughs> and make sure you put the Zoom class thing down below? Good morning, Miss Amy. You see, I got Nathan here. Isn't that cool? Oh, my God. We got Amy. We got Amy, the superstar. I have to become a thing, but I ain't getting up at no 4 a.m. for you. <laughs> Um, good morning, Monica. So, Nathan, thank you for the lesson on failure, for making it real that your fear is the fear of starting because you're afraid of failing after a big win. And I think we all go through that. It's like, man, I'm riding high. And we all are afraid that we might be that Millie Vanilli, that one hit wonder that, you know, will be discovered years after our success that we were just faking it. But really, success living is not about what other people say, but what we experience internally. And if it's yeah. the joy of trying and growing and learning and experiencing that gets you up at 4 a.m. in the morning, then who cares what the world says? Yeah. And the, you know, you're the more leader. It's, it's, um, it's a belief that you think that the best has already come. And that's a lie because the best is yet to come. You can only get better if you continue to try. So, you know, yesterday's success will never taste as good today or tomorrow. That's why you have to keep on trying, keep on going. You know, it, it, that's just the process of life. Yesterday's success will never taste good today or tomorrow. I like that. 
because you've achieved it, you've eternalized it, you've grown into it. And that's the new foundation for where you need to go next. Yeah. And if we're not and like building a house, if you only pour the foundation, what's the value? Yeah, and sometimes it's we the, the fear is that what if that was as good as I'll ever be? And it's it's a it's a lie. Because you can always be better. Well, you're always getting better. Say that again. Um great question. <laughs> I said say that cuz I heard it but I wanted you to hear it. I'm going to have to listen to the replay of this thing. <laughs> Sorry. Nathan 4 a.m. coaching isn't working. Nathan, I want you to know as your friend and as somebody that's watched you you have continually raised the bar on your success and your achievement and what you give back to people and the inspiration you provide. I want you to know that you have not yet begun to see the greatness in you that other people experience being around you and watching you. You are truly at the beginning of your journey and it's going to be a phenomenal journey to watch and hopefully participate as your friend. So yeah, thank definitely. you for letting on the sidelines of it. I receive that, definitely. Dude, because, I mean, you're Nate. You're Nathan. What's not the love? Now, that's true. Talk about the bow ties off air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to let you go have your coffee. I'm going to tell everybody goodbye. I've run over, but hey, I may do this more often. You know, just grab people and put them in. Thank you for sharing your morning with us, Nathan. Thank you, everybody. That was Nathan Cook. He's going to post later the link to the Zoom class. It's a great conferencing tool that he uses a lot, and uh, he'll bring it to you guys as well. Thank you guys so much for having a great morning with me. Continue to live your life in success, and if I can be of any help, let me know. Bye-bye.